Okay, I'm going to try this again. Hi, this is Jonathan Asley of JonathanAsley.com, and I'm so excited to be doing my first live stream. I'm having some te technical difficulties, so I'm going to have to probably go back and delete some of these, but I just want to thank those that are going to be joining in a few moments. I've just got to give a few seconds for people to jump on, um, so please bear with me. One of the challenges with doing you know, live is just technology and whatnot, so I've been having some problems trying to set this whole thing up, and I'm going to need to be taught who looks like uh looks like bliss just joined us thank you for joining us bliss i really appreciate that um and i'm going to give a few more seconds for some others to join us but while i do hey bliss can you do me a favor and post a comment post a question you'd like me to have answered i'd like to just jump right in right now and answer questions so if you have something for me please post it right now let's get this dialogue going so we can have a fun live stream for the next 5 10 20 30 minutes however long this goes so again um i see one person on if you could post a question i would be so grateful otherwise this is just going to be ramblings 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 so um well it looks like you're bashful so <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Um, you know, I'm going to talk about, so for those that are not, hey, Suzanne, thanks for joining. Do me a favor, Suzanne, if you have a question, please post it below. This is all about having a live Q&A answering questions. So if we don't have any questions, this isn't going to be much fun. So um, for those who are unfamiliar with my work, I'm a dating and relationship coach for women. Uh, mostly specializing in midlife, which is after baby making years and before retirement. So my predominant demographic is those folks that are between 42 and 69. Okay, why I specialize in that is because those in their 20s and 30s, um, there's a different energy to forming a relationship for those in their 20s and 30s that's usually centered around, hi everyone, usually centered around having children and raising a family. But what happens when you're in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, the vast majority of single people who are looking for love are divorced. And in that comes a lot more complications. And I use the term complications in that we come to the table with our stuff in our lives. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, with our stuff in our life. We call it baggage. We call it luggage, you know, whatever that is. And it's a little bit more challenging to blend lives with another person. This is why dating at midlife can be so much more challenging than those in their 20s and 30s. And, and let's not mention that um, my area of also expertise is helping women understand men. So because men at midlife, I often say, if you watch my videos, are quite clueless. And what they're clueless to is we, we haven't been really educated on how to merge lives with another human being when we come to the table with our stuff. So in our 20s and 30s, we're like a blank sheet of paper. And as we get in our 40s, 50s, and 60s, we have stuff. And how do you make our stuff work? And this is where most people are rather clueless. This is why if you follow my work, if you've been watching my videos, I often talk about a variety of books. Hi, everyone. Um, by the way, I noticed a question come in, so I want to start um, answering some questions because that's what this is all about. So you got a gist of where I'm going. Now let's just jump into the questions. I'm particular, know what I'm looking for in a man. I find missing, uh, find some missing many things. Okay, so Angelique wrote that. Uh, by the way, thanks for everyone that's writing uh, from all over the world. Thanks so much. Um, all right, so... Here's the interesting thing about what Angelique just wrote. And I want to comment on this because as a dating and relationship coach for women, I can say to you that so many women come to me in the clouds. They have this fantasy of what they want in relationship. And what they lack is the real foundation of understanding the relationship. Now, I will say that women are more relationship oriented than men. Women are more fixated on relationships than men. So there is one facet of women that is different than men is they're more focused on relationship, but that doesn't make them any better. Ladies, that doesn't make you any better at being in a relationship or understanding the mechanics of a relationship. Because if you did, there wouldn't be the need for coaches like myself giving advice over and over and over again. So I do want to say, going back to Angelique's comment, um, uh, well, not that you, you know, that she knows what she's looking for. I get it. A lot of people know what they're looking for. That's great. You know what you're looking for. So why aren't you finding it? 
Isn't that really the question? The next question, if you know what you're looking for, why aren't you finding it? All right, now there's some questions coming in. Slow down, everyone. Um, character, integrity, honesty, open trust, communication, going back to Angelique. Yeah, there's a lot of men that lack all that, just like there's a lot of women who lack that. That's just called being a human being. Okay, Kimberly writes, my ex didn't see himself marrying uh, me after a year together. Can you know for sure by the length of time? Okay. Great question. Um, and everyone, please, this is my first time. I'm, this is going really fast. And I, next time I'm going to have to edit it so it goes much slower. Um, one year in relation, here's my philosophy. You know, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take a year to decide if you want to be in a fully committed relationship with someone. The challenge is, does that person want to be in a fully committed relationship that's partnership oriented? Did you hear that? Partnership oriented. What the challenge in dating today is most people are, are getting their basic needs met of companionship, connection, and sex without any real partnership. What does partnership look like? Partnership means you're part of the same team together. You're on the same team. You're helping each other in your personal lives. You're helping each other in your professional lives. That's what partnership is. And so a lot of people can be in relationship together, but are they really in partnership together? And that's one of the challenges. I do believe if you're not aware of the and, and understand the mechanics of a healthy, happy relationship, it makes it much more difficult to establish a partnership with another person. OK, Jessica writes, I am 34. He's 48. He keeps trying to push me away, but then comes back, uh, comes right back when blank. What can I do this cycle? Okay, please forgive me. These questions are coming in really fast and I'm gonna have a hard time following this. So I'm gonna have to do a better job when I do this the next time. So 34, 48, uh, he, I'm assuming he pulls away when she gets close. It's very common. Once again, the average human being, men and women alike, in today's relationships uh, have want their basic needs met. Those basic needs are companionship, connection, sex, okay? This is what Esther Perel calls stable ambiguity. I talk about her book quite often called Mating in Captivity. Ma well, that's backwards. Should I do it upside down? Mating in Captivity. Uh, in her, I wonder what my book looks like. Self love. Okay, so it looks backwards. Um, so mating and stable ambiguity. Basic means it's the the stable part is that it's monogamous and exclusive, and the ambiguous part is is this a partnership? Are we trying to develop a partnership with one another? Breathe that in. Are we trying to develop a partnership with with one another? Are we and by the way, I'm assuming that that's what people want, okay? I'm under the impression that the goal here is to be in partnership with another person, not in a relationship. And you see how a partnership is a much stronger. When I do this, it can break away really easy. Wow, this is brand new stuff for me. I just came up with this idea. This is what a relationship is. It can be pulled apart really easy. A partnership is much harder to pull apart. So this is why I'm a big proponent of people approaching the dating process with an awareness of wanting to be in partnership with another human being, okay? Men and women alike. The sad reality is, is most people are just seeking that companionship, connection, and sex without any real partnership, okay? All right, wow, lots of questions coming in. Please bear with me, this is going by real fast. He's nervous dating me because we're in the same we're in the same friends group. This is what Tina wrote. He's nervous to be dating me because we're in the same friends group. Sometimes that can be a challenge. When you are friends with other people, there's a, there's an old saying, you know, be careful, don't blank where you where you go to you know, don't shit where you eat, okay? So, it's kind of that's work related, but that can be the same with friends. Because when you have your friends group and you, you decide, think about this. You like another person, but you're not really sure about them. So you're thinking, do I want to explore a relationship? Don't I want to explore a relationship with them? It can be kind of tricky because you don't want to disrupt the balance of your life if it doesn't work out. This is one of the reasons why people vacillate in the dating process. Vacillate means they're, they're back and forth. They're oscillating. They're unsure. 
Because the reality is, and I know, ladies, you've been sucked into this whole feminine energy kind of stuff that all you have to do is just be warm and smile and a man will just naturally gravitate for you. The reality, that's great when, that's a great way to, uh, to approach it when you're meeting people you're familiar with. But the reality is, is today we're meeting strangers. Now, and I know in her case, there's a friends group, but we're, we're really strangers to one another. And it's hard to develop intimacy with strangers because of fear of rejection, the fear of fallout, all of these reasons. So that could be part of the reason what's happening there. All right. Hi, ladies. Just finished private coaching December. With, oh, hey, Renee. How's it going? Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate your comment there. I know we changed your life and I'm really proud of that. Uh, Angelique wrote, yes, person was with sex is good with him, but isn't much like me. Guess more emotional, more physical. I don't know what that means. Uh, thanks, Deep Diver. Um, how to date after being with someone who's verbally abusive? Whoa. How to date? Well, first, you, if someone's been verbally abusive to you, first off, first and foremost, compassion for oneself. Breathe that in, compassion for with oneself, self-love. This is my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? It starts by being compassionate for yourself. Now, forgiveness also is part of compassion for yourself, but forgiveness means for giving love, for giving love. And one of the best things you can do for yourself is give yourself an injection of love because look at, I'm not absolving someone of bad behavior, but until there's a healing, it's gonna make it very difficult to be in relationship with another human being. It's gonna make it very difficult to actually trust another human being. This is why I'm such a big proponent of self-love, self-love. Those who know me know my book, what the heck is self-love anyway, was birthed after the loss of my 19-year-old son, Connor. You know, I'm going to cry now. It's not that my son betrayed me, but why I'm using the word betrayed. When you lose someone you care about deeply, it can feel like such an empty loss. It can feel painful. It can almost feel like a betrayal of what we, what my, I thought my life was going to be like with him. So I share this with you is he was the inspiration for me to do a deep dive into what does it mean to love myself? Because I, I, I my whole life, I'm a recovering codependent. I've literally adopted a philosophy as you need, you have to love me for me to feel good about myself. You have to love me for me to feel good about myself. So, so self-love is, is loving yourself. It's giving yourself that big, gigantic hug. Giving yourself that big, gigantic hug. Because the reality is, is it, until we actually truly begin a healing and forgiveness and compassion, just simply compassion for yourself, it's going to be difficult to be in relationship with another human being. So that's my invitation for you. I apologize. I didn't catch, I, I didn't notice your name, but for that, for the person who asked that. All right. I hope this is sinking in. I can't watch for this. Uh, he's showing me more love hugs to you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, Okay, so Angelique, he's showing, oh, let me go back to that one, Angelique. Uh, he is showing love through sex, more conversation. I'm more emotionally caring, showing love. I'm still open, but he needs healing from mother child abuse. Okay, so listen, ladies, for those who follow my work, you know, I am here to say that the vast majority of the human population is deeply or is wounded both from childhood wounds and traumas, as well as adult wounds and traumas. Let me repeat that, childhood wounds and traumas and adult wounds and traumas. Now, what happens with childhood wounds and traumas, it usually creates our negative patterns and limiting beliefs in our lives. Let me repeat that. It usually becomes the systemic problem with our limiting beliefs in our lives if they go unhealed. So, for example, I'm an anxious attacher. OK, for those who are familiar with love attachment style, do I have the book attached? Yeah, here we go. The book attached. OK, uh, love attachment. There is basically anxious, avoidant and secure. OK, and um, 
Anxious, it means neediness. Please forgive me, my phone's going off. Neediness. So I can be very, I can, I've, I've been doing a lot of healing from anxious attachment, but this all stems from my childhood. So this was deeply ingrained, okay? Now, uh, so this is, and for, uh, for, the, for the avoidant, it's where they're afraid of love and the anxious person is like craving, craving, craving love. So I'm just kind of giving you the cliff note version of that. OK, um, other negative patterns and beliefs. It could be we follow patterns of our parents. Like my mom was very critical in my life. And guess what I am? I'm overly analytical and critical. It's one of my negative patterns and limiting beliefs in my life. You know, um, my belief that I need others to love me for me to feel good about myself all stem from my childhood. Now, adult traumas, the biggest adult traumas that happens in midlife happens to be centered around divorce, around divorce. And because of divorce, it can absolutely shift the balance of power, I'll say, from that old paradigm of being men being provider protectors. A lot of men go through a divorce and the last thing they want to be in relationship is a provider protector. Even though there's a base instinctual need there, the trauma circ can circumvent that. This is why I, I'm a, such a big proponent of don't listen to the rhetoric that is centered on biology-based dating, biology-based dating. We have to throw out the gender and biology, and we have to look at human beings as individuals, flawed in human beings, riddled with flaws. That's what we are. It's one of the reasons why I am always forget that whole fucking masculine and feminine and just be human. Treat a man like a human being. Treat a woman like a human being. Ladies, I know you want equality in the workforce. We need to quite create a different type of equality in relationships. And what I mean by equality, I mean a parity. I mean a unity and equilibrium with one another and throwing out the whole penis vagina rhetoric and treat each other like human beings. We're going to have, I'm, this is my invitation for you. You have a better chance of having relationship success this way. Uh, let me see what else is going on. Jonathan, your videos helped me, uh, but I still have no self-love. I've been working towards healing childhood traumas, but it seems impossible. Uh, Katharina, um, I, I apologize. I didn't pronounce your name properly. Hey, that's a tough one. This is why, uh, where's my book? Um, God, I, I should have just kept all my books up here. I didn't. This is why when I did what was called the Hoffman process, H-O-F-F-M-A-N, Hoffman process. Google it right now. This was a complete inner child workshop to heal my traumas. Look, at the Hoffman process is rather expensive. In fact, just for the record, my ex-girlfriend, after we broke up, treated me on this. And this is a $5,000 program. This was my birthday gift from her because that's how much we, we parted in a conscious uncoupling. And I only share this with you is not every relationship has to be a chaotic day at disaster. Two people can choose not to be in relationship and separate with one another in a conscious, loving, compassionate way. So she gifted me that and it was the most transformative thing in my life. Now, it, listen, you don't have to always do the Hoffman process. You can do insight, Google insight seminars. You can do therapy to heal childhood wounds and traumas. But I'm here to say, if we don't heal underlying problems, we're just gonna repeat problems in relationships over and over and over again. All right, I don't know if I helped on that one, but my invitation is do work. When men tend to change their behavior before getting the woman or after, why? Um, is that Alec? Oh, that's, oh wait. Uh, before getting women and why? Alex, come on, the French expert, uh, any input? when men tend to change their behavior before getting the woman or after? I don't really understand the question. Um, you pronounced my name correctly. Oh, well, thank you, Katharina. Uh, men, okay, men my age 40 often prefer younger women and those men only looking for sex. What does a man look for in a woman his own age? Can What can we offer or should we? Okay, here's the thing about Look at age. Let's talk about the age conversation. By the way, for the record, I was in a relationship with a woman who was significantly older than me. She would kill me for saying this. And I say significantly. Let's just say I was in a relationship with a woman who was 10 years older than me. She is going to kill me if she hears this. Um, but it's OK. Um, so look, at. I found her absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Her age wasn't an issue to me. Now, why do men 
can why can men pr choose prefer younger women? Well, part of it, ladies, is you know we ladies are no different. I I talk to so many women who want younger men as well because the older we are, the more baggage and shit we come to the table. That's one reason why people want younger. The other thing is younger people tend to keep their physiques in better shape than people are older. I'm not saying that as an absolute. I'm just saying that more frequently. So this is very common. Men and women alike, especially after 50 years old, tend to want younger. Now, do men want sex? Absolutely. Yes, that's part of the process. But unconscious men, that's all they care about. For people like myself who's seeking partnership with another human being, we're looking for the whole package. So yes, there are plenty of men who want younger women who want sex. And there are plenty of men who want women their own age. There are plenty of men that are open to dating women older than themselves like I am, and they want partnership. Here's the bottom line with that question. Do you want to focus on what's wrong or do you want to focus on what's right? How about making it simply like this? The right man for me appreciates my age. The right man for me appreciates my body. The right man for me appreciates everything about me. Only focus on that. Stop focus. Ladies, you got to stop focusing on what's wrong and start focusing on what you want. Let me give you an example. An Olympic athlete doesn't sit there and go, Oh, I'm going to lose the Olympics. I'm going to lose the Olympics. I'm going to lose the Olympics because the Olympics is the hardest thing to ever win. That's not what an Olympic athlete does. They go after what they want. I mean, I'm going to use a different example. My son, Colin, that's him right there. He so desperately wants to be a comedian. That's his passion. Although right now he's a tutor. By the way, if any of you have children at home and need a tutor, please check out Colin's online tutoring. <laughs> Write me privately. I'll send you a link to it because he does Zoom tutoring. But he wants to be a comedian. And up until COVID, every night of the week, he was going to open mic nights, open mic nights, open mic nights, because this is his passion. He didn't say to himself, becoming a comedian is hard and it'll never happen. He... People that persevere and get what they want in life, it's, be, it's because they persevere and they keep going. So you have a choice, the red pill or the blue pill. The blue pill is negativity, or we, we'll go with red pill. The red pill is negativity, and the blue pill is I'm going to achieve what I want and focus on that. You have the choice. It's, it's binary. You can focus on what's wrong or focus on what's right. Okay. Um, he isn't as handsome like when we, you and Angelique, he isn't as handsome like when we met him at 24 and 35. We're both in shape. Um, okay, great. Um, okay, thanks for loving that answer. Uh, let's see. Correction. When do men tend to change their unex... Okay, correction. Deep Diver writes, correction. When do men tend to change their unacceptable behavior? Before getting the woman or after mating the woman? Okay, listen. I'm going to be candid with you. Their unacceptable behavior, human beings are riddled with unacceptable behavior. Men, have, you know, the reality is, is we're two people are like sandpaper with one another oftentimes. What's acceptable, what's unacceptable. What's most important is finding someone who's in alignment with you. Ladies, one of the reasons why I have a coaching practice, and by the way, if you need support on this, check out a free discovery call with me. It's on all my links. If you ever check it out, it's just go to Jonathan Asley, hit the coaching button. One of my areas of expertise is teaching you how to vet, how to vet for emotionally healthy men. Here's the reality of life. Oh, where's my wheel? Where's my wheel? Hey, stand by for a second. Okay, I'm back. Okay, look at this is you're going to see this in upcoming video, but I want you to look at this pie chart. Okay, now in this pie chart, there's 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 30, and 30. Okay, this represents men and women alike. Now, this 10 and 10%, these are the people that have clinical emotional issues that make them very difficult, practically impossible to be in relationship with. Okay, these are absolute clinical issues, okay? Now, 10% of these people are already in relationship with someone and 10% are not, okay? So there is a huge percentage of the population that is in relationship with people that have clinical issues, okay? 
Now, I'm making up these numbers. This is very anecdotal, but this is just gives you an illustration. Then there's another 30% that have issues that are doing no work healing themselves. They're doing literally no work to heal themselves. This is half the population. Half the population does little or no introspective work, self-love work, healing work. This is men and women alike. Now, the other 10% are people that are very conscious, aware, doing personal development work, self-help work, um, spiritual work. They're doing the work as I talk about in my book. What the heck is self-love anyway? Have you ordered my book yet? Please order my book at selflovethebook.com. Okay, 10% of these men, these are men and women, 10% are in relationship and there's another 10% like me that wanna be in relationship, okay? Then there's another 30% that are doing something they're doing some personal development work. They're in the tunnel getting there. So why do I share this with you? It's because the reality is, is the vast majority of human beings are riddled with issues. This is why dating and relationships can be so problematic. That's why don't buy into the rhetoric of the whole man must claim you and man must be chivalrous and the man does this and the man does that because that's great to getting laid but you've got to deal with the person after all that. That's why I'm a big proponent of vetting the person because here's the real reality of life. I want you to look at this little chart that I created. This says child, this says adult, and this says parent. Half the human beings out there are acting like children. And, and when you're with a child, the other person has to become the parent. This is because most people aren't operating in their adulthood, their adulthood. And this is what I want to lean into more. And this is what I'm trying to encourage. So but men and women alike to do the personal development, self-help work so they become an emotional adult. Let me repeat that, an emotional adult. And that's what I want to encourage. Okay, what else is people writing? Uh, I guess you're right. Oh, Angelique wrote, you guess, you guess you're guess uh, you right about alignment. We never argue, disrespect one another. He's my second love. Okay. Uh, my boyfriend has only said he loves me twice. We've been together seven months now. Should I be worried? Um, so I think there's, there's a fear around saying the words I love you because I love you comes with some level of commitment. Commitment. In other words, uh, there's, uh, and we men are fearful of saying it because we're, it's basically implying that I'm going to go the distance with you. Here's the bottom line. You know, two people that are sp spending regular time together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, being physically intimate with one another. Um, if they're not reached a point six months into the relationship and they're not feeling a sense of love, I, I, I don't want to say uh, to be worried but I, I really wonder if the two people are aligned with one another. Do they have a, a shared vision? Do, well, first off, do you share the same values? Do you have blendable lifestyles? Do you have a shared vision? Are they an emotional grown up? These are all the important factors to end up with that partnership I've talked about. And if those aren't present, then it can be a problematic relationship. Here's the good news, though. Every relationship has value. Let me repeat that. Every relationship has value. Okay. So, and, and the value is what you learn for yourself. And many people act like victims. Oh my God, ladies in particular, but guys too, you act like victims. It's always pointing the finger at the other person, but you're not seeing the three fingers pointing back here in the United States. We are suckling on the nipple of victimhood. God, people are act like such victims. Look, I get it. They're, unless you have to call a doctor, a policeman, or an attorney, unless you have to call a doctor, a policeman, an attorney, whatever happened in that relationship, you were a participant to it. So take ownership to that part of the relationship. I know I'm going off tangent to what you wrote. Okay. Oh, thank you, Katharina. Uh, I heard that men tend to change for women that they want before they get her. But once they get her, they don't want to work on themselves to improve. Um, you know, I'm thinking of the movie, uh, as good as it gets, you make me want to be a better man. When a man genuinely cares about another woman, 
I know when I was in a relationship with someone I genuinely care for, I, I wanted to be a better man, not to get laid. That's such a short term thing. Um, I want to be a better man because it was good for me too. That's how a grown up operates. Now, um, I'm trying to give you an example of how I wanted to be a better man with her because I was in such a train wreck. Okay, look at, listen, ladies, I'm, I'm in my 50s. For a majority of my life, I've, I've been a train wreck in relationship. Now, not my marriage. I mean, in my marriage, I was so unconscious. I was so myopic. I was so focused on self. I was in a good place in my life, but I was very myopic. Myopic means is, is another word for selfish, but it, it's, it's selfish from a place of unawareness. Let me repeat that. It's selfish from a place of unawareness. It's not intentional. I didn't intentionally want to be selfish. Then after my divorce, oh my God, I was a train wreck. I went into the tunnel for 10 plus years. And even my last significant relationship, I was a mess. It, and quite frankly, it wasn't until my mother passed away and then Connor passing away that I really did a deep dive into my own work that got me onto a threshold where I feel like the ground beneath me feels solid. So why am I sharing this with you? Because this is a significant percentage of the male and female population. Most people are a train wreck on some level. I mean, and the levels could be, you know, I always say everybody is fucked up. It's just a matter of degrees. They are either um, Gandhi and Mother Teresa on one end of the spectrum or they're Jeffrey Dahmer and Lizzie Borden on the other end of the spectrum. And everybody else is in between, just like this graph. So this is why I'm a big proponent of loving on yourself and compassion for oneself. Okay, let's see what else. Oh, they say love, uh, or they say they love you because they're afraid of you leaving. Yeah, well, because insecure people need love, someone else to love them for, to feel good about themselves. Ladies, you're a perfect example of this. I don't know how many of you are afraid to speak your truth to a guy because you're afraid they're going to leave. This is why you wonder why you're in, in you know, unhealthy relationships because you're making, you're not speaking your own truth. Chapter Chapter one in my book, where is it? Chapter one, right here. Speak your truth, do it with kindness. Learning to speak your, your truth is your feelings. You have to learn to speak up, speak your truth. Just do it with kindness. What does it mean to be overwhelmed emotionally? What does it, well, what does it mean to be overwhelmed emotionally? Um, I think... You know, here's the thing about emotions. Either they have a hold on you or you have a hold on them. And what I mean is it takes a level of self-discipline to be aware that emotions are just like the tide in the ocean. They come and they go. They come and they go. But what happens is when you allow negative emotions to come, you're grabbing onto it. You're holding on to the negative emotion. And it requires just letting go. And you, and I like the way uh, Esther Hicks says it, our thoughts create our feelings. So you can shift your thoughts to create new feelings. I always start thinking of happy thoughts. I go into gratitude. I go into appreciation. Um, what was the thing I said earlier to a friend of mine today? Gratitude, appreciation, it'll come to me. Um, oh, um, purpose. You know, Purpose, well, I did a video on this recently about purpose. Well, I'll come back to that. But when you have a purpose in your life, it surely creates a, helps create a foundation in your life when you have a purpose. A lot of people, when they're younger, their purpose is to be a parent. But this is the challenge in midlife is that we're lacking purpose. And without purpose, we can be very, can be very dysfunctional. That's why establish a strong purpose, develop a daily purpose. Um, self-love practice and be in appreciation and help create a solid, a better foundation for inner peace. Okay. Um, men that I've attracted have flirt with me first, then back off, be, be they feel overwhelmed. They don't consider, they don't consider feelings like they appreciate and support. I give and then act like I don't exist. Okay. Yeah. Again, that is an experience you've had. 
Again, I understand those are some experience you have. That's not all men. That just happens to be some men. That's been the experience you've had. Most likely, it's because you've, you've, um, we've allowed, you've allowed, but I'm saying a we of allowed, attraction as being the center of how a relationship happens. It's all, it seems to, this is where most human beings hyper focused on chemistry and attraction without any awareness to shared values and a shared vision blendable lifestyles and emotional maturity. When you're with someone who has shared values and vision, a lifestyle that can blend with you and has emotional maturity, you don't have to worry about these things. It's not gonna be an issue. So rather than focusing on attraction or chemistry, focus on those other three things and you might have a greater chance for success. It's my invitation for you anyway. I did this to him. I did this to him this time around because older, mature, no, know how to speak truth my feelings i'm disciplined now and okay got it last question why do men realize they have a good woman when it's too late okay um why do men realize they have a good woman when it's too late i i'm not sure okay so here's the challenge in most relationships one of the fundamental facets that's missing in a lot of relationships is appreciation now, I did a video on this, and I'm going to go into a little more detail on this right now. But the four elements to a successful relationship is attention, affection, appreciation, and acceptance. I'm going to say this very slowly. Someone write this down for me. Attention, affection, appreciation, and acceptance. So attention simply means being present. Am I present to this other human being that's in front of me, my life partner, my, my boyfriend or girlfriend? Am I present to them? Or am I focused on the future? Or am I focused on the past? People that are focused on the future, focused on the past, aren't present. They're not giving attention. Okay. Affection, touching, feeling, giving each other compliments. Oh my God. You know, the five love languages, uh, words and touch and quality time. Attention is so, you know, I, I'm shocked. How many women call me wanting advice on a guy and the, the guy broke up with them and I'm like, do you guys, are you friends with one another? And they go, no. And I'm like, really? Then why are you lamenting over some guy where you didn't have a lot of affection towards one another? Attention, um, affection, um, appreciation. Oh my God. Can I tell you ladies, most of my male friends who have gone through divorce, they said the one thing that they felt was absolutely underappreciated in relationship. That's the vast majority of men say they feel underappreciated. I can tell you that it's not the words thank you, it's the word grateful and appreciation and what's missing, why somebody goes back after something, you know, why there's a breakup is because sometimes they might finally value or appreciate one another. I want to encourage, I want to make that, I don't want someone to have to break up to feel appreciation. This should be the daily vitamin in relationship. And lastly is acceptance. Here, bottom line is we're going to meet people that aren't exactly aligned with one another. You either accept them for who they are or at least work together or you move on. I don't know how many of you women are trying to fit a square peg in a round hole going, oh, but you're not accepting him for being a square peg. You keep trying to put him in a round hole. I'm like, no, either accept him for who he is and he has to accept you for who you are, or there's going to be constant friction with one another. All right. Uh, question. We've been together for 10 months and neither he nor I are ready for him to be around my seven-year-old dis uh, dispute despite us knowing each other for four years prior, should I be concerned? Wow, 10 months and you guys haven't introduced each other. Are you guys having sex together, Christy? Answer me that. Are you having sex together? Are you spending regular time together? If you're spending regular time and you haven't, if, well, ultimately, if you want relationship to be successful, it's got to include, okay, so the answer is yes. You spend regular time together. You have sex together. If you want re relationship to be successful, you've got to introduce the family and friends. So this is important. Um, so have a conversation. This is where you got to use your words. Words, use your mouth. Talk. Talk to one another. <laughs>
I crack myself up sometimes. Yes, use your words. Have conversations. This is your. This is someone you're having sex with. This is someone you're spending time with. If you're not talking to one another, you're going to be shoving things under the rug. So have a conversation about it. Okay. How do you get started being? A, how do I get started being a dating coach? I'm watching plenty of dating coaches because I'd love to become one. Okay. Um, how do I become a dating coach? Thank you so much for asking. So you might find this interesting. So after going through a divorce, after turning 40 and going through a divorce, what seems like 100 years ago, um, I started online dating. And I thought it was simply you just plug something in and someone would magically appear. But what happened was I got addicted to online dating. I got addicted to talking to women because I was such a fucking train wreck after my divorce. Oh, my God. I was doing drugs. I was drinking alcohol. I was lose, I lost my money in the market. I was incredibly depressed. And what a great way to shoot myself up was online dating. But what was happening was I got addicted to just talking to women. I was talking to women. I was talking to women two, three, four, five, six, seven hours a night all over the country. Sometimes I'd have five instant messages going at the same time on Yahoo Personals. Oh, my God. But what was happening is a lot of women would reach out to me that I developed friendships with and say, hey, Jonathan, will you help me improve my profile? So how I got started was simply helping women improve their profiles from the male perspective, sh telling them why their pictures look like shit and if they do this and do this. And what would happen is I'd get phone calls back weeks, weeks later going, oh, my God, I met a great guy because of what the advice you gave me. And then I began studying uh, relationships. I've, I've a, a mount, I think I've amassed over 20,000 hours of coaching. I have over 3,000 hours of personal development work. I have a neuro-linguistics programming certificate, and I'm currently getting my cognitive behavioral certificate. Now, I don't say this to impress you. I just want to impress upon you. I've done a lot of work. How did I become a dating coach? I just put myself out there, and it just happened. Um, here's the thing. There's a lot of dating coaches out there. There's a lot of people talk, 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 talk. And a lot of them is... It, are, they're talking out of the sides of their mouth. My work actually is because I study human behavior. So if you haven't done a significant amount of personal development work and actually studied human behavior, quite frankly, there's no business being a coach out there because all you're doing is giving advice based on the rules. A lot of people give advice based on the rules-based dating, and that's very short-lived. If you follow my work and like my work, it's because I'm talking about human behavior. I'm talking about psychology. Um, so maybe get a psycho psychology certificate might be a good place to start. I would love your tips on improving our profiles on dating sites. Oh, my God. OK, Angelique, Master John, thank you. Their pictures look like shit. Exactly. So, ladies, um, let me just give you an example of a recent profile. This was a recent profile of a woman here. I'm sorry to put her name on there. This was her first photo. This was her first photo. This is the kind of shit I see every day. What does it, what does a good profile look like here? Just give me a second. Here's my photo. Look at how crystal clear that is. Well, you can't really tell. I'm, I'm bragging here for a moment. Every photograph should be crystal clear. I took a, here's a woman's uh, picture that I just happened to, um, but look at how crystal clear this photograph is. This was one, I really like this photograph because, well, you can't tell, it's a little blurry, but it's crystal clear. Um, anyway, so start with crystal clear photographs, no sunglasses, no, you know, no fucking Snapchat crap. Nothing of those filters with Snapchat. That is just so ridiculous. No selfies. I mean, come on, this is obvious. Do I even really have to answer this? John, it's normal. Hi, Jonathan. It's normal for men over 50 to respond to all your messages and texts, but never really initiate. By the way, your favorite, you're my, oh, thanks. Um, okay. This is a great question. Why will men engage on the dating sites and then not initiate a meeting? Okay. I am guilty of this a lot. So it's the pandemic. I'm bored. I'm by myself a lot. I want connection. So I've swiped 
right and somebody else swipe right. Now I look at her profile and I'm like, ah, it's, 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 I'm not overly, it's a maybe, it's a maybe. And when someone's a maybe, it's just nice sometimes to feel connection with another human being. I'm guilty of this. I'm not proud of this. I'm guilty of this. Here's the thing. Human beings are thirsty for connection. We're thirsty for connection. But it's really hard unless you're feeling like a wow. Like when I feel a wow because the woman's profile is fucking awesome and I'm feeling the wow, I am absolutely all over it. When their profile is mediocre, but I just want some attention and I'm just guilty of this and I'm just giving you some examples of why men do this. We don't initiate a date because we're not really, because you're a maybe to us. And maybes, you're just kind of killing time. Women do this as well. I can't tell you how many women's profiles who are stellar that I put in effort and they ghost me, they don't respond, they take forever. It's, it's, it's men and women alike, okay? Wow, this is really going great, this live. Okay, you are crystal clear. Uh, I'm having issues with what to write about myself on a dating site. Help. Uh, you know what? Here's the thing. Go to match.com. Read other women's profiles. I can tell you, read the profiles. Find the ones that you really like. Go read some woman's profile. Find one and like and just, you know, not plagiarize it, but give you some inspiration. But most profiles are this. Blah, they're like this. Wah, 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 wah. It's from Charlie Brown. It's literally, you're saying a bunch of rhetoric. Find something spectacular. Oh, go to eCyrano, eCyrano.com. Evan Mark Katz. Anyone know who Evan Mark Katz is? Post his link right there to eCyrano. He writes dating, pro his company writes dating profiles. Evan's a, a personal, um, you know, social friend of mine. So um, go to E. Cyrano and check out to help create a profile for you. I'm done with online. I've done online dating. Wait, I'm done with online dating 12 years. I've been friends for one year. Wait, hi. We've been friends for one year. Then a month ago, he said that he is physically attracted to me and he wants to be friends with benefits. Should it be emotionally attract? Wait. So why would a man want to be friends with benefits is because they like you. They're attracted to you, but it means they don't want a relationship with you. Hey, listen, I have had friends with benefits in my lifetime. Now, here's the thing. We both knew the score. OK, <laughs> we both know the score. So when someone knows the score, um, it's it's basically saying, I like your company. I enjoy spending time with you. I'd like to have sex with you, but I don't want to be in partnership with you. That's what that says. In my humble opinion. I know you're supposed to be a super positive when dating, but any tips for when your life isn't really full because of pandemic? Yeah, buy my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? Look at the back, by the way. Isn't that cute? Um, <laughs> look at the pandemic is socks, man. It is fucking crazy out there. It's hard to date during a pandemic. I mean, do you know when, remember when the pandemic happened and you saw all these dating coaches going, yay, we can start doing Zoom dates and you can have your cut, you can have your, your, your wine and share a date over Zoom together. Yeah, that's great for a couple of times, but ultimately if you're not face to face, you're just going to end up in a virtual relationship and that kind of sucks. So look at, you got to fill your life with as many positive things as you can. I just bought a uh, paint by number set, just something to do because I'm like going stir crazy. So um, do things that bring you joy, call friends and, um, and just, you know, the more you can inject yourself with love, that's what matters most. Okay. Uh, it's cute. No kissing, no kissing, no hugging. What is that? Sadly, by the time you weed out the men who are just wanting physical relationship, you are tired of the sight. By the way, that's actually an interesting point she makes. Look at, yeah, you know what? Sex is free. It, I mean, what's the expression? Why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? The reality is, is with the advent of birth control and the, and the reality is, is marriage isn't needed to have sex. Yes. We men get to get we get all the milk for free. It's great. Thank you, ladies, for giving us the milk for free. And what's happened is burnout has happened. You know, 
If you listen to my podcast, the What Would Love Do podcast, I always say the number one emotional health issue is I'm not, I don't feel good enough. I feel unlovable and I feel unlikable. And nothing triggers that more than habitual dating, habitual dating, habitual dating. I, I was recently, a woman told me that a dating coach told her to go out on one date a week. Well, in one year, that's 52 dates. That's a lot of people to go through to have nothing happen. This is why I teach you how to vet for emotionally available men. So instead of going out on 52 dates, wouldn't you rather go out on five dates with three solid or with five solid prospects and choose from that? That's what I teach anyway. Okay. Uh, read books, take new hobbies, virtual painting, dance, blah, blah, blah. Oh, perfect. Thanks, Andrea. Uh, join your local meetup groups. You know, yeah, meetup groups. Uh, Doreen, uh, I pronounced, I butchered your name. You know, I think meetup groups are fine, but you look at, you can't join a meetup group now in a pandemic. Please say the name of the site for profile again. E. Cyrano, E. Cyrano. Uh, go to Evan, E-V-A-N, Mark, M-A-R, M-A-R-C, Katz, K-A-T-S, or K-A-T-Z, and check them out. Come on, Jen. Zoom is cool. I better do nothing. Uh, what is the ultimate happiness of a man? What is the ultimate happiness in a man in relationship? Sex. No, I'm just kidding. Um, ultimately, when I'm, you know, it's interesting. Men and women want really ultimately at the base level the same thing to feel safe with the other human being, to feel safe, to be vulnerable, authentic, and transparent. That's what men and women are craving. The problem is we're all covered in armor of childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas that makes it very difficult because there's so many people are armored up, men and women alike. Trust issues, abandonment issues, and let's not get started on rejection. Men, as they age, fear rejection significantly. This is why a lot of men, you know, aren't this chivalrous, chivalrous and coming on. Oh, look at that. <laughs> coming on strong, you know, and take charge. I know it sounds all great in theory, but we're afraid. I'm afraid of rejection. This is why it's got to be a two lane street. This is why I'm a big proponent that date. I did a post today and said, what's happening today is a stalemate. One person isn't making effort. One person isn't making effort. And they're not coming to the middle. It takes making a little bit of effort, 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 a little bit of effort to come to that two lane street. Is this sinking in? I hope it is. Okay. Why do men say one thing about one thing, but mean something else? He says he doesn't want a relationship, but treats me like his girlfriend. Well, it's because it's not that he doesn't want a relationship. He is in a relationship with you and he thinks of you as a girlfriend. What's missing is partnership. He doesn't want partnership with you. This is buying. We can get the milk for free because guess what? Relationships today are getting the milk for free. Partnership means an invest. Partnership looks like this. It's an investment. Relationship is this. It can break away easily. I just came up with that. I'm really proud of that one. Okay. Spoke my truth after being disappointed again, and now he says he's giving me a break. Should I let him? Should I? Oh, shoot. Sorry. Let me go back here. Um, should I let him go or not? Haven't heard from him in a week, dating for 10 months. Both of us are in our 40s. Um, so, you know, it's, I mean, I think it's good. To, here's the thing. Two people should be talking about your relationship should be something built. It's kind of like building a house, okay? First you start with a foundation, then you build walls, then you build sides, then you build the roof and you have all these, you know, all these trestles and things in there. A relationship is something built. Most of you are dating from a, from a perspective of men are the leaders of the relationship and you give your job to the wrong person. My mom, right there, she was in charge of the relationship. I'm here to say, ladies, you are the emotional leaders of the relationship. You set the standard. You set the rules. You set the standard and you set the rules. We men will follow. If we like you a lot, we'll just follow the rules. You establish the rules. Start talking about it before the penis ever goes inside the vagina. Spoke, uh, this is awesome. What's your take on... What's your take on dating men recently separated six months? Can he be ready to date? Okay. Um, 
Okay. Getting seems flying. Okay. So uh, someone who's recently separated. Look, after my divorce, <laughs> I'll never forget. I've been separated for about four, five months. And I, one woman I wrote on match.com and she said, how long you've been divorced? I said, I'm not divorced. I've been separated for five months. She said, reach out to me in two years after you've had, or 18 to 24 months after you've had one or two transition relationships. Here's the thing. A marriage is like this. You have to unravel the tapestry and regain your sovereignty, your individuality, before you can re-engage with another. If someone is still in this phase, it makes it difficult for them to be in their individual state to be able to come back like this. So you take your, you, you, you take your life in your hands every time you choose to date a separated man. Now, here's the thing. If he's codependent, you will be the first person he latches on to. And chances are you have an 80% chance of failure in your relationship because 80% of second marriages fail or 75%. Anyway, so it's because you're not building a relationship together. This is why you've got to buy the book Eight Dates by Dr. John Gottman. This is the book to teach you how to build a relationship, the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. Wow, I, I didn't believe this was going to go on this long. Okay. Uh, I hope this is, by the way, is this sinking in ladies? Is this resonating? Please post a comment. Let me know. Leslie, probably when he's moved on, the distance will make him realize the distance will make him realize distance doesn't make anyone realize anything. This idea that men fall in love with, they miss you. Ah, uh, men fall in love when they appreciate you until you're appreciated by another human being. There's no love whatsoever. Missing doesn't create love. Missing creates anxiety and a temporary fix because a lot of people treat each other like property and not like human beings. Uh, okay. Okay. Oops. Yes. Amen. Thanks. You are awesome. Thank you so much. Yes. It's wonderful. Yes. Super interesting. Love this live. Hey, this was a lot of fun. I, um, this was my first time doing this. I screwed up. Um, I can't believe how many people joined live, how many people gave thumbs up. Hey, um, Listen, if you had value in this and you need some love and support, check out my link to a free discovery call. Check out my group called Midlife Love Mastery, where I shoot uh, questions. I shoot videos based on your specific questions. Um, my book, what? The, where is my book? What the heck is self love anyway? Please check it out. And also, uh, I've got a podcast called the What Would Love Do podcast. Look, I'm going to wrap up this <laughs> this live, my first one. It's been an hour. I had no idea how this was going to turn out. I am so grateful for all of you. I can't read it because I don't have my glass. Well, let me just say, um, Faith, uh, Carol, uh, Angelique, Jean, Akima, uh, thank you, Deep Diver. Uh, there's just so many people. Yafi, Jenny Girl, thank you so much. This has been so much fun. I've been truly honored to be able to share this with you. I hope you did find value in this. And again, if you need any love and support, reach out to me professionally. Okay, I'm going to wrap up this, this live stream like I do my videos first. Oh, wait, hold on one second. <laughs> like I always do. First off, I'm going to give myself a big gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone or a friend or a pet or even a teddy bear and give it a hug of love. <laughs> you guys have been so wonderful. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I want to thank you all for the love and support you've given me regarding Connor. You guys have been great. Guys, gals, friends, ladies. Um, big hugs to you. I hope I'm making a difference in your life. I want you to make a difference in your life and begin loving on yourself because that's going to bring you the most amount of happiness in your life. Thanks so much and bye-bye now.